Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're digging into a brand new study that tackles a massively important topic and that is how much protein do older women really need to build muscle from resistance training. Now we know strength training is one of the most effective ways to fight age-related muscle loss, but does it work in isolation or does nutrition have to support it? This study explored whether there's a tipping point in protein intake where increases in muscle mass begin to plateau. Now the findings of this study may actually surprise you and it raises important considerations for both everyday lifters and health professionals like you and I. As we age, our skeletal muscle mass naturally begins to decline through a process called sarcopenia. It's linked to frailty, loss of independence and greater risk of chronic disease. Resistance training, however, can slow down or even reverse that process, but only if the body has the necessary inputs and building blocks it needs, specifically adequate dietary protein. Protein recommendations for older adults have been increasing in recent years. While the current RDA is still lagging behind at 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, many researchers now suggest that older adults need closer to 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram per day to support muscle retention and hypertrophy, especially when resistance training is involved. However, there's also some evidence suggesting that resistance training itself improves how efficiently older muscles use amino acids, potentially lowering the protein recommendations. So this study set out to test whether there's a clear protein intake threshold needed to support muscle growth in older women who are engaged in structured resistance training. So what was the purpose of this study? Well, the goal of the study was to determine whether there's a minimum daily protein intake associated with optimal muscle growth in skeletal muscle mass during resistance training in older, untrained women. They also explored whether or not protein intake influenced changes in body fat mass. The researchers hypothesized that the higher protein intake would be associated with greater increases in muscle mass and possibly reductions in fat mass during a 24-week resistance training intervention. So let's take a look at the methods. The researchers analyzed data from 97 older women with an average age of approximately 69 years. All participants were physically independent and had not been engaged in regular exercise prior to the study. Over a 24 week period, they completed a supervised resistance training program three times per week, performing three sets of eight to 15 repetitions across eight different full body exercises. Changes in muscle and fat mass were assessed using a good old DEXA scan. The researchers used a validated equation to estimate skeletal muscle mass, and this is cited from Kim and colleagues in 2004, using a predictive equation based on DEXA-derived appendicular lean soft tissue. This basically just utilizes the DEXA data from the legs and the arms. Now, I recently did a video on the use of DEXA for tracking short-term changes in muscle mass, which you can see here on the screen. But in short, while DEXA scans may be a great way to estimate initial values in skeletal muscle, you need to be careful not to rely too heavily on changes in DEXA-derived lean body mass to the short-term changes in skeletal muscle size. Just keep this in mind as I share these results as it may impact how we interpret the present study findings. Dietary intake was assessed using a repeated 24-hour dietary recall throughout the duration of the study. And importantly, protein intake was recorded in grams per kilogram of body weight per day based on their habitual diet. The researchers used analysis to determine whether the participants' habitual protein intake was associated with changes in skeletal muscle mass and body fat mass, and if so, whether there was a specific breakpoint which might indicate there being a protein threshold. So let's take a look at the results. What did they find? Well, first, as expected, participants on average gained muscle and lost body fat over the 20 weeks of training, regardless of their protein intake. The lethal muscle mass, as estimated by DEXA, increased by about 4.8% and body fat mass dropped by 3.4%. More importantly, there was a significant positive correlation between protein intake and muscle gain in what the authors referred to as skeletal muscle mass. Using a segmented regression, the researchers identified a break point at approximately 1.1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Above 1.1 grams of protein per kilogram, 
Further increases in protein intake did not appear to provide additional benefits, indicating that there is a point of diminishing return. In contrast, there was no meaningful relationship between protein intake and changes in body fat. Whether someone ate 0.9 grams of protein per kilogram or 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram, this didn't predict how much fat mass they lost throughout the 24 weeks. So what does this all mean for you and I? Well, for older women engaging in resistance training, hitting a daily protein intake of around 1.1 grams per kilogram of body weight appears to potentially be a threshold to support lean mass. The author suggests that eating more than this amount may not add any further benefit, at least not for muscle growth. However, all this to say, additional research that images skeletal muscle using more direct methods is certainly necessary to draw stronger conclusions. This study doesn't suggest that you need a massive protein intake like 1.6 or 2 grams per kilogram unless you personally enjoy eating a higher protein diet. Also, since the women in this study were untrained at the start, we can't say for certain whether trained older individuals might benefit from slightly higher protein intakes. Not surprisingly, the study also reinforces the idea that body fat loss during resistance training seems to be more closely related to energy balance than it does protein intake. So if fat loss is your primary goal, focus on your overall calorie intake and training consistency, not just your protein targets. Now, when you read the discussion of this paper, the authors discuss changes in lean mass and changes in estimated skeletal muscle mass interchangeably. For example, the authors cite research stating that another study observed that after 12 weeks of intervention, consuming approximately 1.8 grams per day did not result in greater muscle hypertrophy compared with a group that consumed approximately 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram per day. However, if you look up that study, you'll see that the authors measured changes in lean body mass and appendicular lean mass, similar to the present study, which may influence how this data is interpreted. Now, before we take these results at face value, it's important to remember that DEXA scans don't directly measure skeletal muscle tissue. Instead, they estimate what's called lean soft tissue, which includes not just muscle, but also water, glycogen, hair, nails, organs, and other connected tissue. While DEXA is a convenient and widely used tool, especially in large training studies, it may not accurately reflect the true muscle hypertrophy, particularly over short or moderate timeframes. In fact, previous studies comparing DEXA to a gold standard method like MRI have shown that the two methods often agree on total lean mass at a single time point, but they don't always track changes in muscle size well over time. In fact, one study found that when participants gained muscle according to MRI results, DEXA sometimes showed no change or even a decrease in muscle size. And this certainly matters when it comes to interpreting the size of the effect in studies like this one. So while the trends of this study are helpful, we should be cautious about assuming that every gram of fat-free muscle mass gained on a DEXA scan equals actual contractile muscle tissue. So what are my conclusions from this paper? Well, to wrap it all up, this study suggests that aiming for around 1.1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight might help support lean muscle mass gains in older women starting resistance training. But we also need to be cautious because this study examined muscle using DEXA scans, which can't directly measure actual muscle tissue. So while the findings are useful, they don't necessarily tell us the full picture. As always, I want to highlight what I believe are perhaps the more important takeaways and that the fundamentals still matter most. And this means number one, consistent resistance training performed with a high level of effort is critical. Number two, a sufficient weekly training volume is required for each individual muscle group. Number three, a supportive nutrition strategy that includes adequate protein, likely across a range and sufficient overall energy availability. And number four, most importantly, patience. Remember, muscle growth typically occurs at a rate of just 0.2 to 0.4 centimeters in thickness over an eight to 12 week time period. So whether your goal is to build muscle or simply maintain strength as you age, 
It's less about chasing magic protein numbers and more about aligning your training, your nutrition, and your expectations with your long-term training goals. Now, if this kind of analysis has helped you think more critically about your own nutrition and training practices, or how you perceive information shared across social media or in the research, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel for more breakdowns just like this, and let me know in the comments. How much protein are you consuming? And what's your approach to resistance training? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video.